series that I have created for all of you out there regardless of your age. I am currently filming this in March 2020 while the world is going through some really hard stuff. And in my business, I spend a lot of time teaching online lots and lots of classes as well as teaching retreats here in my Oregon Coast studio. But right now it was really important for me to put some good, solid, long form, free content for those of you who might be stuck at home, maybe you have kids at home, or maybe you're just looking for something interesting to work on in your free time. So I'm gonna be sharing with you a variety of different DIY projects, tutorials, art projects, behind the scenes over here that I'm hoping most of this is just like all age friendly for whoever wants to watch. Um, a lot of these videos are going to be a lot longer than some of the things that I typically share so that you can watch kind of longer form stuff with the hopes that you will get inspired to get creating in a variety of different ways. So everything from crafts to techniques to sharing my supplies with you, to sharing what things look behind the scenes. My husband and daughter are even going to get involved in some of this stuff. So I'm super excited to welcome you to this new little web series and let's jump into creating. Okay, so I thought it'd be fun to kick off our first in this series of creative play episodes by sharing with you guys some really simple, fun art journaling concepts that can actually help you kind of express yourself in a visual way. So for those of you new to an art journal, it's basically just a notebook or a pad of paper or a sketchbook, a place that you can mess around with doodling, drawing, expressing yourself, and more than anything, playing around with creative supplies. I don't know about you guys, but as an artist, I feel like I need a no pressure place, a place where I don't need to create a masterpiece or something I'm gonna sell. I need a place where I can just get my ideas out and mess around with creativity. So many times with art, it can be really intimidating to start a project that hangs on the wall, but an art journal actually enables you to really have like this private place and space to just screw around with your favorite supplies or things that you have around the house. So what your supplies look like are basically a notebook, a sketchbook, a sketch pad. Even if you just have pieces of paper, you can use a lot of these concepts. Um, you can use a lined notebook pad. It will work perfectly fine. I love using watercolor pads of paper. Um, there's a lot of really wonderful mixed media journals and pads out there, but I don't want you to feel like you need to go buy something. This right now is one of my current art journals, and it is actually a 99 cent store um, pad of paper, of lined paper that I just paint in and mess around in. So even though it's not like perfect paper, I'm still able to mess around and get creative in it. Other things, I just want you guys to gather the supplies you already have on hand. Don't go out and buy anything. Go through that junk drawer and figure out what you already have. Pens, pencils, watercolor paint. I keep a lot of really cheap acrylic paint on hand. Lots of Crayola markers over here because I have a kid. Paint brushes. Anything you have on hand is actually going to work for a lot of the things that I'm going to share with you guys in this video. And the last thing you need is an open heart because when you create, sometimes you have to just open yourself up to being creative and vulnerable and taking risks. And what I wanna show you guys in this video is that you can use a variety of really simple techniques and concepts to actually kind of get your feelings out. Um, you can express yourself in abstract ways in just a really healthy, creative way. Creativity can be incredibly healing, incredibly calm and peaceful, and a wonderful way to add something unique to your day that helps you maybe cope with the outside world. So with all that said, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so one of my favorite ways to get my feelings and emotions out and to really get expressive in my art journal is with scribbling. Sometimes I don't have images or ideas or words when it comes to my art and that is when I grab any tool and I start to scribble. For one, it's expressive, it's a beautiful way to add wonderful lines to your artwork, but a whole other element for me personally when it comes to scribbling is just 
feeling like I can get something out. This is my actually my number one go to when it comes to feelings, expression, getting something on a page that doesn't look like anything specific at all. So scribbling, I'm starting you guys off with this whole concept because it truly is a wonderful way to begin connecting the things going on in your head, in your heart, in your life with a technique and a supply. And I want you, I wanna encourage you to really channel what it feels like to scribble as a kid where you are not worried about what things are going to look like, if it's the right color, if it looks pretty, if it looks muddy. I truly want you to just tap into and connect with the feelings that you have going on. I can't tell you guys how many times I pull out my art journal and I literally just scribble till my heart is content because there is something in the process that for me personally is soothing. It is a way to get things out. It is a way to connect with what I'm feeling in that moment and just get something on that page without any pressure of things looking beautiful, things looking like they're going to be my next masterpiece. And I love to use a variety of different supplies. So the cool thing about scribbling is that you can basically use whatever you have on hand. Markers, pens, pencils, colored pencils, pastels, brushes, acrylic paint, watercolor paint, ink. The sky is the limit for this concept and technique. And what I have found is that different supplies kind of for me go along with different moods. So something you can do is take this whole concept of scribbling even a step further and start figuring out like what does feel good in that moment? Does it feel good to be sloppy and messy with a brush and acrylic paint? Does it feel nice to just grab a dried up marker and just scribble across that page with a lot of energy and emotion. I really want to give you guys the choice not only to tap into your feelings, the things that you've got going on and try to attach them to those scribbles, but also give you the choice to mess around with a variety of different supplies when it comes to scribbling. So to get started, I want to encourage you to start tapping into your emotions, your experiences. These things might change from day to day or it might be something that you simply want to focus on over and over again. Tap into that feeling as you select your supply and then I just want you to let loose and go wild with scribbling on that page. You can hold your pen or your brush in a variety of different ways. You can use your non-dominant hand. You can go super, super fast and press really hard on that surface or you can go very slow and calm and peaceful. I'm going to leave all of that up to you but really Really encourage you to hold whatever emotion or memory or experience that you want to work through or focus on hold that in your head as you are selecting your materials as you are scribbling on that page for me personally I tend to pick scribbling a lot if I'm working through frustration or anger or excitement for me I just love to go nuts and wild and scribble I use it a lot within my layers because not only is scribbling a really wonderful way to just kind of get your feelings out and connect with them in the moment but it's a beautiful way to add some unique marks and lines within your artwork. If you're an artist who does work in layers a lot like I do, it's a really great way to get your emotions out, but at the same time, be creating this very unique surface that is truly all about your own experience. Okay, so one of my favorite simple, easy, very accessible ways to release anything I have going on in my brain, in my life, is actually through free writing. Free writing is something I don't even know how many years I've been doing this within my art, but because so much of the things I create are really based in layers, I find that using my own handwriting and giving myself an opportunity to get my feelings out with my writing is such a wonderful way to create layers within my work. So this is another one of those techniques that you can really have two different um, purposes behind them. The first is just to get it out. If you enjoy writing, 
writing or journaling, keeping a diary, much like I have my entire life. Um, the writing process and doing it for no reason except to get those feelings out can be incredibly profound when you're processing things, whether it's good or bad. It's just really a nice way to get things out of your brain. Um, but it can also serve that purpose of on those surfaces creating this really interesting texture or mark making that can be incorporated into the layers of your work. So when it comes to free writing, I don't want to get too deep or too heavy. I really want to keep this open-ended so you can run with it in ways that apply to your life. But I want you to see that you can really have it serve those two purposes during your process. You can be using free writing to expel and release the things going on in your head, but you can also at the same time be creating this really interesting surface filled with layers, marks, contrast. And I like to approach it in a variety of different ways. I will pretty much use any tools and materials for free writing from Crayola, crayons and pens to um, pencils, drawing pens, Sharpie, paint brushes with ink or watercolors or acrylic. I will basically use just about anything depending on my mood, depending on my time and space that I have available. I'll use anything to get those feelings out. And oftentimes this process for me just looks like these short bursts of time, maybe 10 to 12 minutes of just writing about my day, writing about my feelings, and finding interesting space on my surface to fit that writing in. So you guys are seeing me free write on anything from a blank journal page to layering over the top of some of those painted pages, squeezing that lettering in here and there, layering lettering just over and over again. I love dedicating one single page and every day writing over the top of it so that there's just these layers of experiences and moments and emotions. So for me, creatively free writing is less about you know, writing my next novel, but it's more about getting that stuff out. So the pages that I layer, I honestly, I don't need to go back and read. I don't really care if anybody else is going to go back and read it. In fact, I prefer that nobody would read it. So I love obscuring my handwriting, layering it so it's hard to see. It's truly about that moment and that process. It's not about creating something that at the end of it all, um, your audience or your family or whoever it is is going to sit down and read it. This is for you and only you. So don't be afraid to make it, um, make your handwriting obscured or messy or layer it or paint over the top of it like we have in lesson two. I want you to feel the freedom to just, just get those words on paper. And for me, sometimes I don't always have the right words. I might write the same thing over and over again. Um, sometimes I don't even have the mindset to spell things correctly because I'm working quickly and just letting my brain go. And I really, in this video, it's such a simple concept, but it's so important and so profound to give yourself the time and space to get things out in really simple ways where you don't have to overthink. You don't have to be worried about somebody reading it or it being perfect. I want you to see and really get inspired to use writing in a variety of different creative ways. If it's changing up those materials, if it's layering, if it's just painting over it, it can be incredibly creative in the process, but it can also be so cathartic just to get those things out. So even if you don't have the right words, the right tools, the right spelling, perfect handwriting, that is okay. I want you just to let go of all that and just get words, thoughts, feelings out on that page and know that this can then in the future serve as a process that maybe you incorporate into your work. Maybe like myself, you start every single painting out with free writing and then you paint over the top of it and let some of it show through. Or perhaps you use little nooks and crannies and spaces in your surfaces as a place to add free writing. It's just a really wonderful way to add something unique textural and something with depth and meaning to your surfaces, whether it's all just personal for yourself 
or if it is something that eventually gets shared. I want you to see that the process of just getting that stuff out of your head, it can look creative, it can be used with different materials, and it can be incorporated into those layers. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is a really simple way to kind of let go of expectations, even comfort, and have a little bit of fun with your non-dominant hand. So I'm right-handed. Um, my left hand is my non-dominant hand. And this is something I have been doing for years. It's a technique they take you through as an art major in drawing classes. It's something that I actually lean on when I just need five minutes of letting go of control and expectations. I'm okay with my left hand, but it feels incredibly awkward and uncomfortable. I'm not able to have control over what I'm putting on that page and while I can kind of move things around and it'll look pretty decent it's hard it's uncomfortable so I want to get you guys started just grabbing your favorite creative materials and using that left hand. Now keep in mind, we are all about process, not results. So this could be scribbling, this could be drawing something, this could be using those symbols and shapes and trying to get them down on a page with that non-dominant hand. I really enjoy using this process when it comes to drawing, but I also love applying it to painting. So as you can see, you can apply it with just that paintbrush and paint and really mess around with that non-dominant hand with brush strokes, just getting color on a page. Um, I actually use this technique a lot and I like to incorporate it into my actual work that people end up seeing. I love grabbing a brush and applying paint with my left hand when I'm looking for something really expressive, when I'm looking to create brush strokes that maybe need a little bit more of me letting go so I want you guys to keep an open mind no matter how uncomfortable this feels to really grabbing that non-dominant hand any tools and materials and just messing around with it for five to ten minutes just as an act of letting yourself see that it's gonna be okay that it's okay to let go of control it's okay to let go of those results and get uncomfortable I oftentimes kind of feel silly when I'm doing this and I find myself laughing because it really pushes my brain in a different way and for me, I really like to welcome those emotions. Okay, so let's get even more uncomfortable and let go of that pressure and expectations. I am going to ask you guys to close your eyes and create. I know, it sounds totally weird. I'm fully aware of how weird it sounds. But this is such a powerful way to disconnect with results and expectations, to stay aware of what you're feeling and going through as you're creating. It's also a really profound way to visually just shut off. Oftentimes when you close your eyes, you're able to connect more with memories, with images, shapes, colors, weird designs. At least I do when I close my eyes. So here's the way it works. I want you to just challenge yourself to close your eyes for some short bursts of time. Now, if it's really tempting to open them, get yourself a blindfold, cover your eyes, force yourself just to shut off visually for about five to 10 minutes. Have your favorite supplies right in front of you. I found that this process is easiest with just a pen or a marker or a pencil. Painting is actually super fun with your eyes closed. It can just get messy pretty quickly, but just have those supplies within reach so you can grab them with your eyes closed. And I want you just to begin experimenting, moving that supply around on a page, getting comfortable with what it feels like creating with those eyes closed and as you get comfortable you can begin tapping into things I like to tap into a memory a memory of walking on the beach and what the breeze felt like or what I was seeing in the distance a memory of a person or a moment or something that really made an impact in my life um, I like to tap into an emotion with my eyes closed much like we did in lesson one connecting those emotions with 
with our brush strokes and scribbles. This same process can be applied when you close your eyes and you just move things around on that surface. So as you get comfortable, you can start getting a little bit more complicated or in depth with what is going on connecting the things in your brain the things going on in your heart and your soul and your body with the movement of your hand on that surface but when you take sight out of it when you close those eyes you take out expectations and what I love so much about this process is that I'm able to actually open my eyes and be really surprised about what I see. And for me, this is the ultimate act of letting go of control, expectations, perfection, and truly trusting your intuition and the process, tapping into your energy, your feelings, your emotions, and those supplies, and really just for a short moment in time, letting everything go and really, really trusting the process. So if closing your eyes and creating is a little too much, I'm going to give you another fun, a little bit silly um, exercise to play around with. And that is a blind contour drawing, but you actually cover up your surface in your hand with a paper plate. And this is a process that's really handy to use with kids or young people when it comes to drawing or creating and really focusing on things other than that surface and perfection. But like a lot of the stuff I share, there are so many really simple, playful, fun, silly exercises that as adults we can incorporate into our creative process that really force us to get back to simplicity and basics and just getting uncomfortable with what it feels like to let go and kind of having those results feel unexpected and unique and messy and wild looking and this is what I'm really encouraging you guys to do is create these opportunities whether it's closing your eyes or maybe even squinting them a little bit or if it's a blind contour drawing like I'm doing here in this video I want you to really be open to setting up opportunities just five to ten minutes of getting uncomfortable and setting yourself free from all those expectations. So grab a paper plate, a piece of old cardboard, recycled cardboard, poke a hole in it and put your creating tool in it. It could be a brush, a marker, a pen, and I want you just to mess around on that surface. Maybe use those personal symbols, repeat a shape, scribble expressive brush strokes or hand movements and see how it feels to completely let go. Okay, so another really fun way to get expressive in that art journal is to actually create from a distance. And I know this is gonna look strange, and I mean, it actually feels strange to be doing this. And it's a little silly. I actually giggle and laugh when I work through this process, but it is a really fun way to let go of expectations and really kind of dig deep and focus on expression and marks and movement and energy when you're creating. So I just basically taped my paintbrush to the end of a really long dowel. I used a little bit of washi tape and I'm just dipping my brush onto my palette as I go. I'm trying to stand as far away as I can because once again, I'm trying to create this discomfort, this, this distance so that I am kind of forced to think outside the box. I am using my body to move my brush. I am connecting my movements with my creativity and that color and the only way I'm able to do this is to be standing far back with that really long brush on my dowel. Normally again even when I'm painting even though I'm a very free expressive artist I always find myself very close to my surface. I find myself hunched over and tense and I love that this pushes you outside your comfort zone. It creates that distance which forces you to think in a different way. It feels awkward it feels uncomfortable it feels silly I want you guys to see that you can really set up and create these moments that force you just to let go which for me is just such a valuable part of the creative process and using the creative process as a way to get your feelings out to let go to really have these opportunities to disconnect and let go of perfection Another
Another favorite process of mine um, when it comes to my art journal is to actually toss out my brushes and start grabbing really unexpected supplies and things to create. To just get yourself to let go of those expectations of comfort, of falling into a rut, of just knowing exactly how your supplies are going to work on that surface, and really having a fun time with those unexpected results. So typically when I do something like this, I will pick anything I have on hand. Toilet paper rolls, wrapping paper rolls, um, things from nature, sticks, odd things laying around in the kitchen. Um, I just grabbed a handful of things that I could find in our junk drawer, in our recycling bin, a little bottle cap, a bead, um, just random little things, a Lego, pretty much anything unexpected, strange, unusual, something you wouldn't typically use for painting or creating is going to work for this concept. And really what I want for you guys to do is once again create the opportunity to get a little bit uncomfortable because it's in these moments you're able to discover that it's just going to be okay if all you have to paint with is a toilet paper roll. You're probably going to be able to come up with something creative and have a unique, creative, messy, colorful experience experience. Something I also find when I push myself to let go of my normal tools and materials and let go of comfort is that when I use alternative materials or weird things, I also make really interesting, unique discoveries along the way. So again, pushing yourself to get uncomfortable and let go is also creating the opportunity to maybe discover and learn new things, new tools, techniques that you can use as you start working outside of that art journal. So again, this experience is truly about letting go, kind of digging deeper within yourself without expectations. But I really do want to encourage you guys to hang on to anything that feels interesting and fun and creative and apply it to the art that you're making that you do show to the world, that you do want to sell or hang on the wall. Um, something I really, really enjoy doing with alternative supplies is using interesting things to make marks within all of my layers. So I'm doing two things at once. I'm creating that experience to just let go of my comfort, but I am also using these things to create really interesting um, swipes of color, brush strokes, marks, and it's such a wonderful way to pair a couple of experiences together for yourself. So what I want to encourage you guys to do is just raid your junk drawer, look in your recycling bin, look in the trash. Often the kitchen is a great place um, to find unique things. I like using stuff from my daughter's toy box or things that she plays with just to dip in paint and mess around with. And what I want you to do is challenge yourself to fill one or two surfaces only using those supplies. Again, for the purpose of creating these experiences of what it feels like just to let go of a paintbrush, let go of a pen or a marker, something you're comfortable with, and create a moment of feeling a little awkward, a little silly, a little weird, but really being open to making discoveries along the way. So my last process to share with you guys is actually using tools and materials that are larger than your surface. This is one of my favorite ways to get expressive and tap into movement and energy in my hands and body when I create in my art journal. This is a, a long time trick that goes way back to my days of being an art major in college where we really had to push ourselves and our surfaces and something that we had to work through was actually just using larger brushes on a smaller surface. This is such an easy way to truly let go of overthinking, perfection, um, being real tight with your tools and supplies. Something you cannot do when you're working with large supplies is pay too much attention to details. It's hard to overthink things. You truly are forced in that moment to let go of the things you are normally comfortable with and instead make do and get creative with the supplies that you have on hand. So what I enjoy using are really large house painting brushes 
large palettes that you can buy at a home supply store, that type of thing, and really playing around with those tools in my smaller art journal, my six by nine art journal. And you will see that a lot of my brush strokes, a lot of the marks that I make, my tool is so big that it's taking up a big part of that surface space, which really it, it's limiting you guys, if I'm being honest, it limits me and it limits the amount of things I can do. And if I'm being honest, it makes me feel uncomfortable because I'm not able to do the normal things that I would utilize and techniques that I would mess around with if my tools were smaller. But what I love about this is that it opens me up to really getting creative, letting go of my preconceived expectations and notions and the rut that I can even get in with my creative process. And I'm really forced to get expressive and uncomfortable within the moment. And you can take this process and go larger with your art journal or your surface. I'm using my larger art journal and a piece of scrap cardboard as a swiping tool. And it's large. It's really, really big, which is going to limit my abilities to do a lot with my paint. Instead, I am very much limited to just kind of pulling and swiping that color. Again, this process is more about putting yourself through the steps of letting go of control when it comes to that surface which I think is just such a valuable thing to do creatively for yourself on a real surface level it just pushes you to get creative with your supplies but if you dig deeper you really have the ability to put yourself through the experience of seeing that everything is going to be okay if you relinquish control using something gigantic with very little space very little ability to overwork and overthink things while it may be uncomfortable at first, it really gets your brain in this space of seeing that things are going to end up working out, letting go of that control and that paint and the way that you're working with that paint ends up being okay in the end. It helps you and pushes you to let go of that perfection. I love about working with large supplies is that they really lend themselves to the layering process which as we dive deeper into more techniques and lessons there's so much that is going to depend on the concept of layering and what I love to do is dedicate specific pages to specific tools that I mess around with so as one surface dries I might revisit that surface the next day and start working with those same large supplies again Again, just to get my brain thinking and working in a way that lacks control, that pushes me outside my comfort zone. So while you saw me swipe color with my piece of cardboard, I can then go back into that surface, that layer, with my larger brushes and my larger palette knife and mess around with maybe a swipe of color or a really simple shape. A brayer is another tool that can make very large, big marks here and there on a surface surface and it's actually incredibly hard to control and you are actually limited with what you can do with that tool and that surface which again at first glance it might be kind of uncomfortable but after you get the hang of it you start to realize that your brush strokes a shape a giant mark with your brayer becomes something very intentional and you don't necessarily have to overthink things but you are mindful of space in the way that you're playing around with it so again you can take this concept Concept, apply it to layering and messing around with color, expressive color. I love using those giant tools on a variety of my surfaces. Again, that piece of cardboard, it was giant for my large art journal, but if I work with these tools in my smaller journal, it becomes even more tricky and harder for me to play around with. But I love that aspect of this concept because it really takes me outside my comfort zone. It helps me focus on on color. It helps me get really intentional about the way that I'm moving my hand, swiping things across. This is a really fun practical way that if you just want to get a little uncomfortable, grab those big tools and get going. <music>